Locked On Sports Today is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the noise. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Trey Young spoke about this year's draft class on Paul George's podcast, Podcast P with Paul George recently. No disrespect to the guys that got drafted from the outside looking in, and some guys might surprise us, but a lot of us look at them as role players coming in anyway, Young said. Name the last three number one picks, Wimbenyama, Edwards. You've got some big time names. None of these guys, whether it's Reed Shepard or Alex Saar, none of these guys, you know, a lot of these guys could be just role players. So you're really trying just to figure out who is going to be the best role player for their team. So, Jarvis, do you feel like maybe a little bit of shots fired there? No. Um, I think there's some honesty in there, right? And that's what we always ask athletes to give us when we when, when talking to, you know, asking a question or having a conversation with them. And, and, I, and I'm not surprised at all that it came out on a podcast with another player because – that's just how it works. Like they they get a little bit more comfortable and are, are liable to say something that may get people a little riled up. Because let's take a look at this draft. Is there anyone that you can say as of today, right now, that says, oh, yeah, this dude is going to be a game changer. He's going to be the face of the, the, uh, the NBA franchise that drafted him. I can mm -hmm. say that. But what you can say, given from the potential talent level, we know the NBA draft is geared towards that more so than ever. I, you know, since I've been on this earth and and you say to yourself, like, OK, how can this dude contribute in his rookie season? And that's being a role player, because if you're not the face of the franchise, you're a role player. So it's not too many positions to choose from. So either you're a face of the franchise or you're a role player. So uh, so for him to come out and say that, I don't feel like it's necessary throwing shade even to his teammate, who was the number one overall pick in Zachary Risache. But he's saying, hey, this is in this first year, more than likely, you're going to be a role player. And then there, you never know. Two or three years, we may be looking back on this draft like, oh, man, I did not know X, feel, XYZ guy was going to be this type of player. So, yeah, no, not, not shade, not shade at all. What do you think about those comments, Maria? I think that people take what Trey says the wrong way a lot. And, you know, that's that's sticking up for Trey a little bit. And I think because he's made some really contentious comments over the last year or two years, people sure. hear that and they're like, oh, my gosh, he's out to get these rookies and whatever. I don't think that's what he meant. I think I, I'm kind of with Jarvis here that which, hey, we're agreeing. Look at us. We agreed. Um, <laughs> I think yes, yes. you were frozen Finally. for a second. I was like, oh, no. Um, <laughs> right. Is he mad? <laughs> like, no, I was like, he's mad at me. Um, no, I, I really don't think that Trey did it to stir the pot. I don't think that he was trying to rile up his teammates. I think he was honestly just being honest. And he made a really good point. And he, it was kind of a a way to send a message to the rookies as well. Like know your role, know you're coming in here to do something, which is be a role player. And that's what we expect out of you. And I didn't think that it was anything less than that. I just think that his words get twisted a lot. Yeah. And for me, I think I wonder when I kind of look at it and I'm careful not to over dissect, but while I don't think he was throwing shade, I still think that low key, he has an issue with where these Hawks are because when Good he point. called out, yeah, because he said, you've got, you know, the last couple of number one picks. So he mentions Wimbenyama, he mentions Edwards. And obviously okay. we know what Victor Wimbenyama and Anthony Edwards have done so far in their careers with Wimbenyama almost willing the French to beat the USA. And then Anthony Edwards giving, a lot of good play for the U.S. men's national team in group play early on in their run to the goal. That said, then Trey comes back and talks about Reed Shepard. He says he's going to be a hell of a player. Alex Saar didn't play well in summer league, but he's going to be a hell of a player. And then he says a lot of these guy, guys could just be role players. Now, granted, in the quote we have, he does not mention Zachary Reese so I want to make that clear. But he is talking about top picks and how they're going to be role players. That still concerns me about his concern about where this team is in terms of reset, rebuild, or being 100% ready 
to run after and get after for a championship. I think that's what still concerns me about those comments. Again, not that he was necessarily throwing shade. I just feel like mm, that still says, does Trey Young at this point in his career really want somebody who's a number one pick who's going to be a role player? It's a great point. And, and, and you and when you think about that too, T, like that, when is that going to be going to be addressed? You know, for, for me, I feel like the superstar of your team, and not necessarily, I know T, you know, feel Trey can be a little passive aggressive, and I'm with you on that. And mm -hmm. for me, I, I, I don't want my so-called superstar or face of the franchise to always be wondering like why should he be wondering he shouldn't be yeah. wondering whether or not you know you know what his role is or what he's going to be going forward That's or i know he's under contract he's under contract and like okay you bring in this number one pick everybody's looked at this draft mostly everybody 99 percent of everybody who looked at this draft and, and the, the talent that's in it and they said yeah there's some guys that going to be role players you know they can be some really good ones or it might be one or two that may pop in the first round and be like you know what these guys can you can build your franchise around this guy but as of right now that's not necessarily the case so when you have that going on so do you even want to be in this draft do you want to trade that number one off pick to bring, bring in a guy that you know what he brings to the table or are can you be a go get the guy that he's talking to on the podcast and paul george and say <laughs> Hey man, we want to win now. We're trying to compete, but you know it's unfortunate that he has to do it in this manner because you have a franchise that not necessarily want to reveal outside of just their, their actions what they're trying to do. I think for me, you guys both bring up really good points, and I want to circle back to the Falcons because, and I'm making this comparison because we've talked so much about what's the incentive for players to play for the Hawks. Outside players, right? I'm not talking about the draft. So what's the incentive for them to play there? And I think that's where Trey's frustrations come from. It's there is nothing attractive about coming here right now because we're consistently a play-in team. We don't have any superstars. I'm sure he would say, albeit aside from myself, on this team anymore. And so we don't have anything to get guys to come here and to change this franchise. That's where his frustration comes from, I think. And so going back to the Falcons, look what a proven veteran franchise quarterback does for your team. I cannot say that enough. There were a lot of people who were upset about Kirk Cousins coming here. You don't get a Matthew Judon without a Kirk Cousins. I will stand on that until forever. You do yeah. not have that happen unless you have other players that they want to be a part of something special with. And so I think that's where his frustration comes from. And look, I get it. And all three of us have shared our frustrations as well and kind of just running the circle and running the gamut on what's going on with this franchise. So while there may not have been shade, Tanitra, like you said, I, I, I'm with you. I don't think there was shade. I think you make a really good point. It's him secretly and very quietly addressing some of his frustrations and continuously doing that because we know he's done that a lot this offseason. Indeed. And not to, and this is not an affront to Landry Fields. This is a compliment to Terry Fontenot that I know we didn't get around, but I know the three of us agree. We saw, that's it, Terry. That's it. We knew you were up to something. We knew you were cooking, but we didn't know quite what you were cooking. We heard about Justin Simmons coming in for a two-day workout and meetings. And all of a sudden, Matthew Judon appears and he's a Falcon. And like you said, Marie, it's because that word has gotten out about what they're building up there. I'll go back even last year, Calais Campbell. Yeah, he only stayed yeah. for one year, but the high praise that he gave for the year that he was here and all of the players that have come, you know, person after person, Kevin King said it uh, yesterday on uh, one of the local radio stations. He talked about the fact that when he saw that Kirk Cousins was signed here, not that that was like the defining thing for him but he was like oh wow they're really yeah. doing something down there so yeah, yeah, think, there. yeah right exactly so again this is no affront to landry fields this is just more complimenting terry to say hey we totally see what you're doing and that that's good stuff and speaking of totally seeing what you're doing we see you we saw you ryan howard she of course was 3x3 for the u.s they took home a bronze medal and that was amazing and of course she and the Atlanta Dream get back to action along with the rest of the W tomorrow against the Seattle Storm. Thanks to our everydayers for making the Atlanta Sports Party your first listen of the day. Be sure to stop by Locked on Hawks 
for your second listen. And be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also free and available wherever you download your podcasts. We'll see you on the Atlanta Football Party Monday.